Good evening and welcome to the graduation of the Eastridge Class of 2023. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Board of Education President, Ms. Kimberly Lasher, had a loss in her family and could not be with us tonight, so Vice President Carol Watt will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. After the pledge, please remain standing for the National Anthem that will be sung by our Eastridge Senior Choir members. That will be followed by the singing of the Eastridge Alma Mater and Lift Every Voice and Sing. Thank you, Tim. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening and thank you all set.
Thank you to our wonderful singers and our amazing band who played when we entered. Thank you very much, everybody. Good evening, and thank you for spending some time with us as we celebrate the achievements of the Eastridge High School class of 2023. I would like to introduce a guest sitting on stage. Please hold your applause until I have introduced everyone. On the right side of the stage are Superintendent Ms. Mary Grow, Assistant Superintendent for Instruction Mr. Mark Anson, Deputy Superintendent Mr. John Abbott, our guest faculty speaker Mr. Mitch Nellis, Board of Education Vice President Ms. Carol Watt, Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources Mr. Robert Crescetti, Assistant Principals Ms. Radia Bridges, Ms. Stephanie Bliss, and Mr. Sean Costello, Director of Secondary Education Ms. Cheryl Doberton, Counselors Mr. John Hag, Ms. Jenna Rao, Ms. Uh, Kathleen Healy, and Ms. Doreen Goosen. Seated on the left side of the stage are the valedictorian Emily Ignachuk, salutatorian Siana Dombrowski, <clears throat> Class President Amani Kinlock, Class Class Vice President Layla Washington, Student Council President Nadia Carter, and Class Officers and Senators Aliyah Duff, Alice Caballero, Carly Brockman, and Sada Mahari, and Board of Education members Mr. Dan McInerney, Ms. Stacey Beaumont, Ms. Jessica Krupa, Ms. Doreen Swan, and Ms. Jill Rickey. Special thanks to our staff line leaders who were selected by the class of 2023 to, be the lead, to lead the students onto the floor and are seated at the end of each row. Thank you all. Also, I want to acknowledge our class advisors who helped lead this class for the past four years, Ms. Elena Solorio and Ms. Christina Cook who are seated with the class and will assist them as they line up to cross the stage and take photos as they leave the stage. They're over there. I personally owe a huge thanks to Ms. Kristen Harmon who organized this entire ceremony. Thank you. Thank you to the RIT team for their organization, sound, lights, security, and more. Thanks to our own audio-visual team of Doug Strait and Amin Smith and our EI security team led by Mr. Jim Carroll for working with this excellent staff from RIT. Thank you. Some logistics before we begin. A photographer will take formal photographs after each graduate leaves the stage over, over there. The photos will be available on our website within a week. Family and friends are not allowed to approach the stage to take photos. Also, check your programs right now. If you find a blue round sticker on the inside of the back cover page, you may take one of the potted plants on the stage after the graduates leave the arena. So don't forget at the end, come on up and grab your plant. Class of 2023. I congratulate you on your success. I congratulate your parents for their work as they look through tears in the corner of their eyes. This is a big day filled with important messages from people sitting on the stage. You may sit, class. Our superintendent, Ms. Mary Grow, will greet you in a couple of minutes. Following her, Science teacher Mr. Mitch Nellis will address you as the featured staff speaker. He will speak to you about your role in the world and maybe add a dad joke or two. Finally, you will hear important messages from your valedictorian, Emily Ignachuk, salutatorian Sienna Dombrowski, and class president, Amani Kinlock, who will reflect on their journeys and share important nuggets of advice as you move into adulthood. Class of 2023, we started this year with the senior sunrise. It was fun watching you have a full, challenging, and adventuresome final high school year. You were beaming with big smiles at your senior ball in April, 
and the senior night two weeks ago. So thanks to the parents who spearheaded senior night and putting that, that action-packed event together in such a short time, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> then the senior shined in the powder puff game. And then the last few days, you enjoyed each other's company as the school year closed. And then somewhere along the line, class of 2023, I hear there was a rave in the auxiliary gym. Is that true? Yeah. All right, class of 2023, you will always hold a special place in my heart because you are my last graduating class at Eastridge. I'm taking on a new challenge in the school district next year, and we'll be sitting in the audience instead of standing here at this microphone a year from now, watching next year's seniors graduate. So in a sense, I'm graduating with you. Since you are my last group, I want to share five thoughts with you that I have learned through my life's journey. Hopefully you find something in it for you. Lesson one. Sing and read to children. Sing to children, even if your voice is a bit off, and Miss McQuay can help you with that. If you have a problem with that, she will. Read to children, even if the books are simple. Hearing your voice, the rhymes, the rhythms, and seeing the pictures and the words on the paper creates pathways in a child's brain. Connections of meaning and connections of caring and connections of spirit and connections of comfort. Doing this daily with children sets, up on the, sets them on the fast track to success. So sing and read. It's simple and powerful. Lesson two, forgiveness. Forgiveness is a gift. It's a gift for others, but it's a gift for you too. Forgiveness is not easy and not immediate. Holding a grudge may feel good at the beginning, like an internal power surge. As time passes, that surge eats away at one's core and robs you of the peace that you deserve. Forgiving a wrong allows other people to move on, and it allows you to find power from within. Give yourself the gift of forgiveness. Lesson three. It's similar to lesson two. Don't give others the power to raise your blood pressure. This one's about anger. When actions of others start making you tense, take a breath. Step outside yourself and ask. Ask yourself if you are allowing that person to control you by igniting your anger flame. You decide if the spark will be given oxygen the oxygen it needs to burn. Be bigger than the situation. Don't allow others to raise your blood pressure. Lesson four, exercise. Do something physical every day. Find active interest and keep moving. Walk, right, Ms. Miller? Bike, right, Dr. Hiley? Travis, they should probably run, right? And stretch and lift, and dance. Sienna, right, dance? Use it or lose it. Those who regularly exercise have a life expectancy of two to four years longer than those who don't. Their lives are also more comfortable. Exercise releases endorphins that makes one feel happiness more often. And then combine exercise with eating healthy and avoiding drugs and alcohol, and this has been found to extend lives another dozen years. You have a lot to enjoy in life. Make exercise part of your routine. Lesson five. This is the final lesson. Put down your phones. Yes, put down your phones for long chunks of time. This is a lesson about addiction and maintaining our mental health. In the 1990s and early 2000s, before the explosion of social media and phones, teens faced issues like smoking and teen pregnancy and drug use, and then we were on a really good path. 
with those issues, all heading toward in a very healthy direction. And then around 15 years ago, new issues started to emerge for teens, primarily around electronics-induced anxiety and addiction to phones. It was slow and barely noticeable at first, but today it is in our faces constantly. The numbers of teens suffering from electronic-induced anxiety and phone addiction has drastically increased in the last decade, and the pandemic accelerated these problems. Social media too often sends us messages saying, we are inadequate, we are under siege, we are less than. They, fill in the blank for they, are the enemy. Turn off the noise, everybody, just turn off the noise. Put down your phones for long chunks of time. Get outside, laugh with friends, create some art, I don't know, sing to a child, exercise, forgive. You are better than social media lets you believe. You are better than that mean text thread. Turn off the noise so you can hear yourself. If you do that for long enough, you're going to hear wonderful things. I guarantee it. That concludes my final lesson. Class of 2023, thank you for allowing me to be your teacher today and your principal throughout your high school years and allowing me to graduate with you. Oh, and you could have invited me to the auxiliary gym rave, I would have come. <laughs> Take care of yourself and much love to all of you, class of 2023. Now, please join me in welcoming the superintendent of the East Arundelquate Central School District, Ms. Mary Grow, as she greets the class of 2023. Thank you, Mr. Havey. Good evening to our families, faculty, staff, and the outstanding class of 2023. Class of 2023, congratulations. And as, before I start with my few remarks, I just want you all to stand up. I want you to look at all the family and friends that you've invited to join you today, all the people who have loved and supported you through the years. Give them a wave. I think the lights are going to come on. Thanks, guys. You can take a seat. Thank you. <laughs> As the superintendent of the East Irondequoit Central School District, it is with great pride and joy that I stand before you tonight to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our graduating class. This is a momentous occasion that symbolizes the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, and perseverance. To the class of 2023, I want to offer my heartfelt congratulations each one of you has shown exceptional commitment to your education, and I am proud of the individuals you have become. Your accomplishments are a testament to your determination, your resilience, and your unwavering spirit. I would also like to extend my gratitude to our incredible faculty and staff. Your passion for education and dedication to our students have truly made the difference. You have not only imparted your wisdom, but you have also nurtured the growth and the development of our students, helping them to become well-rounded individuals ready to face, face the challenges of the world beyond our classrooms. To the families and community members who have supported our graduates throughout their educational journey, thank you. Your encouragement and guidance have played a vital role in their success. And together, I believe we've created a strong network of support that has propelled our students forward and prepared them for the next chapter of their lives. Graduates, as you step into the next phase of your journey, remember that you were equipped with the knowledge, skills, and values necessary to make a positive impact on the world. You are the future leaders, innovators, and change makers. Use your education to address the challenges we face as a society, to create a more inclusive and equitable world, and to inspire others to pursue their dreams. As you navigate the path ahead, 
Embrace the lessons that you have learned while at Eastridge High School. Remember the friendships that you have forged, the mentors that have guided you along the way, and the experiences that have helped to shape you. Hold on to the core values of integrity, empathy, and compassion that have been instilled in you throughout your education. In closing, I'm filled with immense pride as I witness the graduating class embark on their next adventure. To the East Rondequoit community, I want to express my gratitude for your continuous support and your collaboration. Together, we have fostered an environment that nurtures the growth and success of all of our students. Congratulations, Class of 2023. I am confident that you will make us proud as you make your mark on the world. Thank you to all of you and to best wishes to every single one of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mrs. Groh. I now welcome to the lectern science teacher, Mr. Mitch Nellis, your featured faculty speaker. I want to acknowledge, first and foremost, that of all the people on this stage, the person that cares the most about the education of the students of East Ridge is Tim Hafey, and he deserves to hear that, and I hope you all recognize it. Um, I'm quite nervous, um, and I hope it doesn't make me a bad person that I kind of hope the kids speaking after me don't do as good as I do. They're going to kill it, though. Uh, this is quite possibly the greatest honor I have ever received, and I don't mean that in any sense of hyperbole. To put this in perspective, a group of high school students just sat through hearing me for 42 minutes every single day of an entire year and thought to themselves, I would like to get five more minutes of him. To my fellow teachers, despite being voted to speak here today, I'm just like you, only loved. I gave my environmental students, uh, periods three and period seven, a survey on what they wanted in the speech. The top votes went to funny, sentimental, over five minutes, a dad joke, and advice. Some of the lowest vote totals were for stories about Mr. Nellis and science, which in case you don't know, I'm Mr. Nellis and I am a science teacher. Okay, with those criteria in mind, I hope to accomplish four things in my time with you. One, prove that Socrates was wrong. Two, make sure you know the future is in good hands. Three, threaten everyone here to meet me in the parking lot if they disagree. And four, save the world. Now I have four minutes to get it all done. I would not presume to know any more than you, so advice is going to be tough, but I will start with a story. Once upon a time, there was a snail that wanted to be faster, so he decided to get rid of his shell. The shell he was born with, the shell his parents gave him. But being faster meant more than being himself. So one day he took off his shell. The problem is it didn't work. It made him someone else and did not make him faster. For when the snail lost his shell, it just made him sluggish. Wait for laughter. <laughs> Dad joke, check. Advice, be yourself, check. All kidding aside, I'd like to talk about Socrates. Socrates, regarded as one of humanity's greatest philosophers, of which I agree, he was truly a great thinker. He was a person revered. However, he once said, children, they have bad manners, contempt for authority, they show disrespect for elders, and love chatter in the place of exercise. They no longer rise when elders enter the room, they contradict their parents, and they tyrannize their teachers. Children are now tyrants. Now let me translate. Socrates said, kids these days. We have all heard it, and some of us have said it. Now, the ancient Greeks loved their logic, and if you follow the logic of Socrates, you would say that the next generation is worse than the previous, and so on and so forth. 
So we must be here to graduate and celebrate the worst people to ever walk the earth. And I got dressed up and asked my wife, kids, and parents to come. Well, I wholeheartedly disagree. I will argue this point to the end of time. The youth of today are fantastic. Those who think otherwise have given up on the future, for that is what we are celebrating today, the future. Anybody caught saying kids these days has quit on hope, and I'm not ready to do that, not today. These are kids that have grown up in a time where wildfires cancel gym class, our highest level of leadership call each other names like 13-year-olds, the goal of any election is to get 51% of the vote, school is through a computer because of pandemics, and every social media company only sees them as dollar signs. Yet here they are, blissfully optimistic looking forward, anxious to be a part of the bigger picture. They did not invent any of the problems in the world that they are going to inherit but they are going to be tasked with fixing them because they don't have a choice. We did not give them a choice. These are the kids that will cure diseases, clean our environment, feed the hungry, take us to greater understandings of the human spirit, write the songs and stories that will bring us joy, be the citizens that push progress to march forward, design the buildings of society, and fulfill those buildings with life. So with all due respect, Socrates, keep these kids' names out your mouth. <laughs> Next, I'm coming for Confucius. I'm going to be vulnerable for a minute because I can think of no better time than now in this intimate setting. I think I know why the kids asked me to speak today. They thought I might be funny. And more than any previous year, I've, I've been asked how I teach every day. They saw in me the same thing that I see in them, a human with limitless potential. I was real with them, like any person sometimes I struggle, this year more than others. They saw that, and I think we connected over that struggle. This is their gift to me. Their small way of saying, we appreciate you. And I can't thank them enough for that. These are not the actions of the worst people to walk the earth. The future is bright because of the people we celebrate today. And anyone who wants to discuss it, we can talk outside after the ceremony. The people in front of us are going to save the world, and I'm happy that I was a part of that, that we all are a part of that. It was an honor to play my role. If I ever get to meet Socrates, I will say thank you for all that he did. I know he will say the same to me. And we will look at what you have all done, and I won't be able to help it. I'll say, I told you so. These kids are outstanding. Thank you for letting me be a part of your day, and I thank you for being a part of mine. Congratulations, the class of 2023. Thank you, Mr. Nellis. Please welcome the class of 2023 valedictorian, Emily Ignachuk. Hello, East Ridge graduates, family, and friends. Today, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about your future. Why not us? This question is something I've carried with me for years. Before any tough lacrosse game, whether it was sectionals or a regular season game, my coach, Coach Freeman, would always motivate us with the simple question, why not us? As to say, why can't we be the team that wins? This has always stuck with me as it has value in many situations. There's no reason to believe that you can't do something or achieving something is impossible. Why not us? When applying for a new job or even taking a test, what is stopping you from succeeding? Learning to go into the mindset of why not me has helped me greatly. What's stopping me from acing this test? What's stopping me from getting this job? 
What's stopping me from winning this game? The answer is nothing. Nothing is stopping you from being the best version of yourself and achieving great things. Overcoming obstacles is a part of life. And the only factor that can ensure failure is yourself. Your attitude, your perseverance, and your ability to take risks. As a student and athlete at Eastridge, I know that there are many obstacles we may face. But I also understand that there is a reason for these obstacles. They are here to make us stronger and prepare us for this next chapter of life. Everyone you know has had obstacles in their life. The people sitting next to you have had obstacles in their life. But it is up to us to decide what to do when we are met with them. Do you want to succeed or do you want to fail? So why not us? All of you are here today graduating after years of hard work. Your ability to overcome these challenges has not gone unnoticed as we cheer for you to walk across the stage. As we move from one era of our lives to the next, we should all keep the idea of why not us. Everyone here has the opportunity for success, and I believe we are all destined to achieve greatness. Our time at Eastridge is just one chapter of a long life and I hope you all use these years as a lesson for your future. I wish nothing but the best for you all, and I'm thankful to have spent my four years of high school learning and laughing with this amazing class. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Emily. Sienna Dombrowski, our salutatorian of the class of 2023, is going to share some important thoughts with all of you now. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I first want to say congratulations to all of us because we finally made it. Um, and as Mr. Havey said, my name is Sienna Dabrowski, and I am the salutatorian of the class of 2023. Now, I don't want to stand up here and give a super long speech and bore everyone, but I do want to talk a little bit about how this year has made me realize the kind of person that I want to be moving forward. So a little backstory. The past couple of weeks for me, have been full of my family and friends coming up to me saying things like, oh my gosh, like congrats on salutatorian, you must be so proud of yourself. And part of me truly is proud of myself. You know, it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of focus to get to this position. And I know that a lot of people know that. But the other part of me is a little disappointed in myself that I couldn't push even harder. Now I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. You're probably thinking that I'm crazy and I shouldn't be complaining about something like this. And don't get me wrong, I'm extremely grateful for this accomplishment in my life. But this is a daily thought that comes into my mind of why couldn't I push myself harder? And did I do enough? Now, if any of you know me, you know that I am an extremely competitive person, and this is why I doubt myself. I'm always trying to be the best at whatever I'm doing, even if I know that I'm terrible at it. It's just like this natural instinct of mine to try and be the best. And a great example of this was during the powder puff game junior year. I thought I was going to be this amazing running back for the team and score like 10 points, um, when in reality, I ended up just screaming at my teammates the whole time, and I actually scored a point for the other team. Yeah, I don't really know how that happened, but it did. Um, and yeah, I was just really defeated by it, and I was so mad that I wasn't this amazing player that I thought I was going to be, even though I very well knew that I had never played football before and I had no idea what I was doing. But I poured my heart out on that field and I got so into that game. And even though it went the opposite of how I wanted it to, I now realize I gave it my all and that's all that I could do. That's all that mattered. Even though the game went so terrible for me, at least I had tried. This past year has been one of the hardest for all of us to get through. It has been full of stress with college approaching, full of rejection in multiple ways, full of emotions with everything ending, and full of hard decisions that had to be made. This year has also seemed to be one of the busiest of our lives as well. The amount of weekends we've spent traveling to different colleges is insane. The amount of hours spent dedicating our time to outside activities is an astronomical number. And the amount of extremely late nights spent doing work after those activities were exhausting. For the past 12 years, our weekdays have consisted of waking up early to go to school for seven hours, and almost immediately after being summoned to our second job. 
This second job made me in the form of a sport, or a club, or an actual job. And whatever it is, I know that a lot of you can relate when I say that our 13-hour days are exhausting. We are oftentimes misunderstood by others when it comes to conversations about how rigorous our schedules are after school. And what never seems to be talked about is how much work and how much dedication it takes to push ourselves to get through those 13-hour days. Oftentimes, a lot of people ask us why. Why do we do this to ourselves? How do we get anything done? And the truth is we have no idea. We just do it. Reflecting on this past year, I've realized that it has all been because of motivation. Motivation all along has been what's kept all of us going, whether we've realized it or not. Being the competitive person that I am, I can't settle for less, and I aim high. I have big dreams and goals for my future, as I know so many of us do. We are hard on ourselves because we, have big, we all have hopes for bigger and better things in life. What many people fail to understand is that with motivation, all of our hopes and dreams are possible. I've had the motivation to push myself in school because I always pictured this moment right here. I wanted it, and so my motivation made it easier to work for it. So many of us have looked up to others that live a lavish lifestyle, and we've all dreamed of having it. And so we all got jobs to start working towards it. We want it, and our motivation has pushed us to work towards it. Whether you've realized it or not, we have all been motivated by something in our lives that has pushed us to get up and do something. I have accomplished more today than I ever thought I could have, and all it took was a little motivation. Even through our long days and nights, we are still here and still going. If you can set your mind to something, there is no doubt that you can achieve it, no matter how hard it may seem. The more you try and the more you push, the better the success will feel at the end. It's often tempting to take the easy way out, and I witness those close to me do this every day. But I've realized you only get out what you put in in life. Being the best at what you do is possible, and I'm still working towards that in multiple ways. Every single person in this room is capable of getting to where they want to be. You just need to access your motivation that is already inside of you to make that happen. Now, moral of the story, those with a hard work ethic and dedication will always aim for the stars. Salutatorian, although such a great achievement, is most certainly not the end. We are all going on to such bigger things, and the real dedication starts now. Be the person in the room that has a passion. Be the person in the room that others call extra. And most importantly, be the person that stops at nothing to make their dreams come true. Because those kinds of people are the most successful. Thank you. Thank you, Cece. Now your class president, Imani Kinlock, will share some important thoughts with you. Hello to the class of 2023 family and friends. I would like to start my speech with some of the most memorable moments I have shared with the class. And in the end, I hope to inspire you all to strive for success in all your future endeavors. But first, I would like to give you a little summary about how I became a part of this class of 2023. In 2016, I moved from Baltimore, Maryland and came to Washington, New York. I attended Laura Tampardee Elementary School and had the honor of having the best teacher in the building, Mrs. Antonelli. When entering the class, I didn't know what to expect or know who I would become friends with. But here is when I met friends that I still interact with today. After fifth grade, I left the district and attended Bishop Carney, only to, only to return in eighth grade to the middle school. After which, I stayed with the district and attended Eastridge High School for all four years. At elementary school, I experienced some of the best moments of my life. My favorite memories by far were attending the end of the year picnic and recess. This picnic was only for fifth graders where we were all handed white shirts that our fellow teachers and classmates could write on. I know this memory is not only memorable for me, but for the class also, as still today, some of my classmates still carry those white shirts. Recess was a time of the day when everyone looked forward to. Whether it was playing football or running around the playground, it was our time to have fun and relax. Still today, I wish our re we had a recess or a designated nap time in high school. 
These are cherished memories because fifth grade was our first completion and our first step to a new beginning. Eighth grade is where, where I met even more people while also seeing familiar faces. Here is when I endured two memories that I wouldn't forget. Almost two weeks upon attending, I became known as a Maryland girl with a Mississippi accent. It got to the point where the cl class created a whole song about it that I am too embarrassed to share. I am sure family and friends, if you would like to hear about it, my fellow classmates wouldn't be afraid to share it with you afterwards. In middle school, we had our eighth grade formal where everyone just like they were standing on a red carpet. I don't know why my class took it that serious. Eighth grade year was our second completion and our second step to a new beginning. Now we're in high school in a completely new environment. Half of our ninth grade year was ruined from COVID-19, and in 10th grade, we were split in half because of hybrid learning. In these two years, we experienced a new method of learning and had a glimpse of what it felt like to be independent. But we made it in spite of, and soon entered our 11th grade year. My favorite memories of 11th grade were prom and field day. During prom, everyone was again dressed in their best outfits, and field day was a day where we could all miss class and have fun together with the various activities. This was the year when everyone realized we were almost at the finish line. And soon enough, we were seniors whose only challenge was to finish the year out. In our senior year, we had ball and had the luxury to go to Darien Lake. I'm confident to say in all of our former occasions, no one could say that this class of 2023 did not know how to step. Now here we are, about to graduate and receive our high school diplomas. But we couldn't have done this without the help of our parents and teachers. In these four years, our parents have listened to numerous meltdowns, points we talked about dropping out, many attempts at being sick just to skip school, and their countless acts of comfort and support. To our teachers, who extended due dates because we got really bad senioritis, or in our COVID years, spent months begging for us to simply stay awake for our class, Mr. Benlin. We wouldn't be on our way receiving our diplomas if it wasn't for you all, so I'd like to take this moment to thank you. Today, we have reached our third completion and our third step to a new beginning. But this isn't the end. Each of my memories related to one of the three ideas you all should continue to carry when going through life. The ability to adapt, persevere, and finish. We all have had to go through a moment in life where we knew no one and or have been in an environment that was unfamiliar. Janae Ika once said, there's no slowing down as the glow spins round and round. You gotta keep going. This quote is to remind you that life isn't meant to be a breeze. We will, con we will endure and continue to face obstacles in life that are meant to slow us down. Adapt to these circumstances and continue to persevere. We all have had to persevere during diff difficult times. Guys, we had to learn online for one and a half years. But as shown today, with perseverance comes success. One of my favorite quotes is, get it done, ain't no excuses from young boy. You, the class of 2023, have control over your own success. No matter what your future's endeavors are, do not let anyone or anything stop you from greatness. We are a class that could do anything. Congratulations to the class of 2023, of which I am a part of. We did it. Thanks, Imani. Ms. Carol Watt, Vice President of the Board of Education, please join me at the lectern. I would like to present the class of 2023 for the awarding of diplomas. Ms. Watt, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents and the New York State Education Department, I hereby certify that the members of the class of 2023 have met the provisions and requirements for graduation, and I recommend that they be granted their diplomas. After successfully completing all of the mandates set forth by the Board of Regents and the State Education Department, it is my pleasure for the Board of Education to receive the Eastridge Class of 2023. Will the first row please rise?
Dylan Joseph Baldessari. Jacob Giovanni Cordon. Deidre Nicole Adams. Madalena Uraline Adams. Kadir Kamaladeen Ahmed. Nicholas John Alberto. Jaleel Terry Allen. Ayman Abdu Saleh Alawasha. Zaire Malik Anderson. Raymond Lewis Appleton. Anaya Neve Ashford. Jaylees Jessica Alvarez. Jessely J. Alvarez. Savan Rose Avnet. Muyo Badzik. <laughs> Abigail Barnard. <laughs> Aura Barnes. <laughs> Jackson Benjamin Bauer. Hector D'Angelo Bazan. Thomas N. Bell. Yadira Bethencourt. Elise Catherine Bishop. Jason Blaze. Aliyah R. Blyer. Laney Grace Blythe. Nelly Roxana Boroco Ramirez. Zachary Ryan Banaza. Hunter Timothy Boer. Teresa Nicole Bowens. Malone Malik Brantley. Treasure Denise Briggs. Brian Oliver Anthony Brown. Egypt's Elise Brown. Olivia Marilyn Brown. Zion Malik Brown. Dominic Bruno. Nevea R. Bunch.
Grace Birkin. Mia Ann Colenzo. Jameson Callahan Styles. Haley Jordan Calaram. Caitlin Elizabeth Campbell. Jeremiah Kent Carbonell. Alba Carlet. Sherman Carson. <laughs> Owen Michael Clark. <laughs> Kenneth Ruben Cologne. <laughs> Sebastian Isidro Comas. Kansas Cruz Conley. Amaya Shondell Cruz. Carlos Jonel Cruz. Nayara Melody Cuillo Nescalarde. Perseus Curry. <laughs> Kiana Naomi Davis. Miranda Crystalline Davis. Isabella Marina De Niro. Joshua T. Dentinger. Austin Dominic DiPiori. Devin Michael DiMartino Gervasi. Jenna Marie DeSalvo. Jennifer Dispenza. Nathan John Dots. Honesty Latrice Drumgold. Andres Duran. David V. Diyaki. Messiah Jashan Eric Evans Figueroa. Gianna Carla Fagiano. <laughs> Dina Marie Fagett. <laughs> Noah Raymond Fox. <laughs> Jack William Gallipo. Jaden R. Gamble. Kamara Jalice Gilbert. Edwin J. Gonzalez. Jayla Jashel Marie Gonzalez. 
Gabriela Maziel Gonzalez Gavarete. Angelina Marie Gutowski. David Emmanuel Hall. Nathaniel A. Ha. Tori Lee Henderson. Luis Hernandez. Arthur James Holloway. Taylor Emily Hummel. Griffin Ryan Hunzinker. Yasmin Ibrahim. Lillian Elizabeth Ingram. Loyalty E. Jackson. Ruth E. Jackson. Jameer Deshaun Jacobs. Sabir Jimmy. Deshaun Johnson. Ross Marlon Johnson III. Emily Aaron Kennel. Catherine Riley Curbs. Benjamin Joseph Kiefer. Arle Lisa King. Michael Caden Kirchgesner. Elena Marie Connect. Eliana Marie Connect. Madison Margaret Cabarrus. Brett William Lachance. Ryan Anderson LaRose. Leilani Michelle Lopez. Yadier Lopez. Cecilia Ludwig. Mayelis Lugo. Travis Lamar Lynn Jr. Lawrence David Lyons. Margot Manu. Joey Morocco. Nija Martinez. Matthew Joseph Mateo Matier. Keenan Amir Mays. Samaj Jaylee McBride. Harmony Rashai Jacqueline McKinnis. Anthony Isaiah Mendez. Luis Eduardo Mercado. Zaire Karad Metcalf. Rocco Yandel Mooborn. 
Nora May Miller. Jemiah Monet Mitchell. Salamawit Abibi Mola. Mallory Mora Montana. Destiny Montanez Olivio. Shayana Autumn Moore. Christopher Jose Morillo. <laughs> Luisa Morris. And Natalia Munez. Muiz. Ahmed Musa. Donatello Alexander Nako. Nicholas Newfrock. Haley Ray O'Neill. Javier De Jesus Ortiz. Miguel Angel Ortiz Valencia. Geralise Tatiana Paravani Torres. Gabrielle Rafael Parisi. Graylin Bruce Passino. Nathiani Pedraza. Narcelin Pena Jimenez. Narlin Pena Jimenez. Josiah Jean Michel Pinel. Alfonso Perkins. Emily Olivia Perry. John Anthony Petrowskis. Jordan Jennifer Mian Petrie. Evan LeVar Pitts. Nicholas Anthony Platania. Austin A. Price. Nicer Quaid. Rowan Quaid. Irma Quiles. Benjamin H. Rackle. Tyler Ramirez. Tiana Chevonice Ricketts. Kiyomari Robinson. Angel Omar Rodriguez. Elijah Joel Rodriguez. Jose Elias Rodriguez. Ivan Javier Rodriguez Melendez. (laughs) 
Neville Rolando Rodriguez Vogel. Joseph Angelo Rosado. Tristan Lee Salters. Geriana Abriella Saltzman. Herman Francisco Santiago, Jr. Allure Leanna Scott. Bear Ivan Sell. Lamia Majed Sheriff. Xavier Purnell Skinner. Journey Amaya Nevea Smith. Micah Daniel Smith. Jessica K. Soto. Catherine Soto Huertes. Dennis Scott Spencer III. Skyler Mackenzie Stid. Zaire Azur Switzer. Sebastian Talbot. Madeline Bradley Tebow. Jasmine Nicole Tollison. Tierra Diane Tross. Desani David Truesdale. Taikira Shenqui Tucker. Mara Adriana Tufano. Lydia Sophia Bayene Turner. Mariah A. Marie Twyman. Adam Robert Tylock. Evan David Valley. Isaiah Jordan Vincent Manuel Vargas. Jasmine Nicole Vasquez. Michaela Marie Werner. Bailey Christy Wilson. Lameek Wilson Johnson. Jan Pavel Vinuk. Elijah Adam Wright. Cordell Josiah Young. Got everyone? 
Sada Johannes Mahare. Carly Beth Ann Brockman. Alexandria Ray Caballero. Aaliyah Marie Duff. Emily May Ignachuk. Sienna Marie Dombrowski. Imani Nataya Kinlock. Layla Olivia Washington. Nadia Riet Carter. Guests in the audience, in a couple minutes, the recessional line will lead the graduates actually out the back doors behind the stage and through the curtains and out the doors there, which means you can meet them outside on the main driveway in front of the field house. So remember, though, also check your programs right now. See if your blue sticker's in there. Graduates are still getting their photos taken, so as soon as we get back to our seats, we'll do the recessional. Let's hear it for the class of 2023. May I have the graduates who are taking their pictures to move over there just a little bit so we can have room for the recessional. The ones who are taking your photos, when you're done with the photos, then you're gonna do the recessional, okay? Yep. So if everybody can freeze just for a second, graduates over there. The members of the class of 2023, please face me and rise. If we can stop the photos for a second over there. Everybody rise, class of 2023. Move your graduation tassels from the right side to the left side. I hereby declare the Eastridge High School class of 2023 to be graduated. The recessional now will begin. Students who are getting their photos taken, when you're done, you can head out too. Let's go, Mr. Hoffman.